I'm Thranky Ramajuraka. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for clicking. Because now I get the opportunity to talk about with you. The, the subject of staying on track, focus uh, on what we're doing here, self-mastery, personal involvement, establishment of true selfhood, circumvention of consciousness hijacking, and mind control from external sources. Um, by way of perception, deception, and the like. And how to accomplish these things, why they work, how they work, um, and getting it done. So uh, not getting distracted in the process. I mean, there's a lot to cover in a world affairs of the current state of, of, of humanity, uh, a lot of matters to discuss, and there are a lot of areas in there. There's a lot of room for getting off into details that, that, that are not necessary, although a lot of detail is required in order to, to, to comprehend all of it and get it all done. But the way we think about some of these details, we can get distracted with disputation or, or uh, undue attention or the wrong kind of attention, you know, getting off into it. We can get distracted. Let's just leave it at that. We can get distracted sometimes by the, by the very things that we want to pay attention to. It just depends on, on how we're thinking about them and what we're getting out of them and whether we're using these details as stepping stones or, you know, there's, there, there's this point at which a stepping stone can become a stumbling block. All right, so let me just give a hypothetical example here. And I want to point to at least one, what I take to be a universal law at work in all things. You know, that's, that's why it's universal. And <clears throat> what that has to do with, say, this example. Let's say I just made a video, okay, about, uh, what is it, uh, personal involvement and your pet. Personal advance, I think I call it, and your pet. In that, I mentioned um, domesticated animals. I said that uh, our pets, in large, I mean, unless we get a wild animal and, and have it as a pet, um, which isn't usual when we think of a pet, and that's like a different class of pet. Typically, we're talking about a domesticated animal. Now, there are a lot of ways to talk about the domestication of animals and, you know, how, how, how the, the structure and function of domestication of animals. But specifically, what I was saying was we probably wouldn't have access to or come together with these animals as pets if it weren't for them being domesticated. Right. Now, a person could say, well, that's not good for cats. Domestication of animals in general, the whole thing, is it's not good because they should be left to their wild nature. You know, in fact, the very idea of domesticating animals long ago, is, it, was a, it was a terrible thing. Uh, it, it just doesn't work across the board. It's a bad thing, you know. Because look, look, look at what it's done to them in the first place. You know, domestication of animals, and uh, you know, perhaps according to some written records and you know, cave paintings, uh, they were used as labor. 
What the heck? They're not good. And now, now we have them as pets, and you know, now they, now, now we're their masters. What about their own sovereignty? And for God's sakes, look, a lot of people put them in cages now. You know, a lot of people abuse them. It's not good. The whole idea of domestication of animals. This is, this, is, this is a bad thing. This is a bad thing. With the point I was making, with respect to the point I was making in that video, that's, that talk about the domestication of animals as a, as a whole thing being bad, horrible. Terrible consequences is a distraction. It amounts to a distraction. It became a stumbling block. <coughs> I was talking about your own personal advance through this contact with a domesticated pet as well as that pet's advance. With respect to intellectual development, individualization of the animal, it's involvement, constructive involvement. While there may be a time to talk about domestication in general, that's not the time. That, that distraction <coughs> is easy to get involved in. Yeah, it is. It's right there. It's right there to engage in. It just dovetails right in. It's just an extension of, of the current discussion, of the current ideology, of the current facts being presented. Yeah, it's right there. The thinking involved in getting involved in the distraction can generalize the distracting mental activity going on and communicative activity going on to the point where the whole point that was the real, you know, focus in the first place, the intended focus gets tossed out as having any you know, truth value, or even validity, or use. It can just become a bad taste over the whole thing. The point could be missed. Oh, so it's, it's good to stay on track. It requires a lot of focus. In many ways, just personal involvement stuff, self-mastery stuff. I want to point out, too, and, you know, like when, when it comes to something like domestication of animals, you know, um, sure, sure, yeah. I was pointing out a, a, a very constructive and, and, and involvement-oriented uh, thing about our involvement with domesticated animals as pets. Sure, but this 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 contact, this 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 domestication through time, through history, you know, through the past and up till the present, and 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 then our specific involvement with pets and contact, bringing them into our home and our lives, opens the door for us to abuse them as well. Of course, sure. With any intellectual development, personal advance, our own self-mastery, our own personal involvement, every time we move to a new level or into a new phase of awareness and conscious growth, any such thing, especially when it comes to 
movement toward true selfhood, you know, spiritual unfoldment, greater conscious expansion. We open the door, we face new obstacles. The quality and quantity of the obstacles in large evolve in proportion to the growth, to the personal development. The law of opposites is the law I wanted to refer to here. So here we are at, we're at it now. It's universal. Any kind of advance will involve it because it's universal, it's, it's always there. learning to work with it, how to use it, how to approach it, how to think about it. It's critical. That's part of the whole thing. A very important part. In fact, all of our personal involvement work should take it into consideration. Because it's always at work anyway. Becoming consciously aware of it, how to put it to use constructively, is a vital tool. No, no. Uh, I think it'd be pretty hard to argue against the assertion that being able to travel in a boat on water is a, is, is a, is a constructive thing in itself, in itself. I mean, you can get from one place to another, whereas otherwise you couldn't. I mean, we, could, we could go back and say, well, you know, tribal living clan living, uncivilized or pre-civilized living, people still had to swim to get somewhere, maybe to escape something, maybe to escape a wild animal or to get something from here to there where there was water in the way. You had to swim, but Maybe you want to take more with you. Maybe you need to take more stuff with you than you can put on your back while swimming. So, pretty good idea to have a boat. Make something, you know, like strap some logs together. Make a raft, something like that, right? That's a step towards civilization. <laughs> teaching other people how to do the same thing. And then somebody comes up with an idea and they make it a little better, make it work better, make it actually be able to carry stuff, like put stuff in it rather than on it. Maybe be able to move a little faster. That's And, and then teaching people how to do it, teaching people how to be courteous about it. You know, not shove each other over the side. getting a little smarter about it, applying experience. These are steps in a, towards socialization or what we might call domestication. Would we say that this is a, just all wrong? Of course, you know, yeah, sure. There's the propensity for people to take other people out in the boat and then toss them over. Because if you didn't have the boat, you couldn't do that, right? But does that make this human advance in travel wrong?
if we want to, if we're talking about the progress, the constructive progress in boat making that has to do with, you know, water travel, and and we bring up, you know, that that people now make warships, or people toss other people over the side, or sometimes boats sink. Should that count out the point that's being made? The facts of the matter? The, the law of opposites will always be at work. So that's just trivial. That's, that's a trivial truth. It's hardly worth pointing out. Because it applies everywhere. We could, we could get involved in the same distraction over everything. Everything. The same one. The same form of distraction. We could apply our, our distracting formula to everything. If the clansmen or the tribesmen did that, wouldn't last. Wouldn't work. So even that idyllic state, allegedly idyllic state, would crumble. Because there's law of opposites. And getting caught up in assessments over certain of its instantiations just blocks everything. Just it's unnecessary. But it could be done anytime, anywhere, over anything. It's unnecessary and it's it's when a stepping stone in understanding becomes a stumbling block. So, recognition of instantiations of the law of opposites can get us distracted. But we also have to consider that law of opposites. See, that, that's where we can come, that's where we end up coming close to getting distracted in, in, its, in its details, but we must examine its details so that we know how it operates, so that we can see what things are obstacles and what things uh, keep us on track when it comes to working with the law of opposites and its instantiations, because all progress comes with potential digress and room for regress. It's always like that. It is well known among people who are further on the path of evolvement than we are. If we talk to them, I'll bet you almost all of them will immediately recognize your question. What it's pointing to, if you were to ask, do you face bigger obstacles you know, more challenging ones the further you go? I believe that inevitably, in almost every case, the answer will be, yeah, sure. Here's a somewhat Christian religious way to put it. The further you get towards salvation, the more the devil will annoy you and try to stop you, try to pull you back the other way. It's a way to talk about it. So, watch for this stuff. Expect it. It has its directing side, and it also has its 
his directing side. Be discriminative. Focus on what you're doing, what your motives are. Focus on the highest point, the 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 the, the goal, the big one. This will involve, as you go, increased awareness of the entire environment, the entire procedure. But don't go that way while you're learning about what's that way. While you're becoming more aware of what's that way. when we bring in prejudices and biases that, that, that are, you know, especially rooted in the lower planes of activity, and we start applying them when we're focusing on higher planes of activity to get there, <clears throat> these things can inhibit us, can distract us. This depends on how we're thinking about them. We can put a negative assessment on anything. But we don't have to. All right. I'm through Anki Ramachirak. Be well. Don't get distracted. Maintain your focus. Where are you going? And be aware. Of what's along the road. Okay. I'm throwing you on Be well.